Hey guys, Kevin here, and today we're going to find out if the Zenfone 2 is still worth it, and if it stacks up against the latest budget smartphones. So starting off with the design, although the device is mainly made up of plastic, the metallic brushed polycarbonate back gives it a really nice premium feeling, and it's pretty hefty too. The button placement was a bit disappointing in my opinion, with the power button on the top and the volume rockers on the back. So this is kind of annoying to me as the phone is on the larger side and I had to always shift my hand on the top to press the power button. The design of the Zenfone 2 is overall very reminiscent to that of the LG G3, but in my opinion the lack of ASUS's innovation in design doesn't make this any less ergonomically pleasing when you are using this device in one hand. Navigating around that 5.5 inch display is really easy thanks to the curved back of the phone. Speaking about the display, the Zenfone 2 is packing a 1080p panel with a pixel density of 403 ppi. This is pretty decent by today's standards, but it's definitely not as good as the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 or even the S6 Edge. The display gets a bit washed out in direct sunlight, even with the brightness cranked all the way up, and it's definitely not really a bright panel. I find this to be one of the major flaws of this device. The panel is much dimmer than any of the other budget smartphones I've been using recently, and while this isn't really a huge problem, it should affect battery life, obviously in a positive way. To my surprise, I got around 4 hours of screen on time with medium use, which is a bit disappointing considering my Idol 3 gets over 5.5 hours. What makes the Zenfone 2 a really cool device is under the hood. It's packing a dual SIM slot and a micro SD card slot, which is a combo that is really hard to find, even on some of the newer flagships. So now let's talk about performance. The 64-bit Intel Atom chipset is unlike any of Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors, but not in a good way. The Zenfone 2 comes in two different models, the lower end model only having 2GB of RAM and the Intel 3560 processor, and the higher end model having 4GB of RAM with the faster Intel 3580 chip. So what this means is that the higher end model will equate to much better performance and in my opinion it's definitely worth your money. I have the higher end model and it's an absolute beast when handling graphic intensive games and video but I found it to be extremely power inefficient. Either that or the extremely bloated skin on top of Android makes the phone battery drain much faster than it should. Now let's talk about the camera. The 13 megapixel rear camera is capable of shooting 1080p video at 30 frames, which is passable, but the detail and dynamic range doesn't even come anywhere close to that of the OnePlus 2 or the iPhone. Moving on to the software, the device is running Android Lollipop under a pretty bloated Zen UI skin, which definitely takes away a lot from the battery life, but in my opinion it adds some pretty useful features, quick toggles and apps, which are otherwise not present on stock Android. App compatibility was amazing, and the device didn't really lag or stutter too much. Overall, I think ASUS has really stepped up their game in the mobile industry to bring us a really cheap and affordable device which covers all of the basics and adds some sweet features like the expandable storage which isn't even found on the higher end devices like the OnePlus 2 and the iPhone. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit that like button as it helps the channel out a lot. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite budget phone? Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.